All right. I asked you guys, and a few of you stepped up and made suggestions for topics on Breath of the Wild. And here's what I've come up with. Our first comic comes from Fasagalog. I'm sure that's wrong, but I tried contacting this person, and I didn't get a response. So he would like to know my thoughts on weapon durability, and if material gathering would affect it. And then he goes on to mention Skyward Sword, speaking how the Goddess Sword transforms into the Master Sword, and talking about the Biggeron Sword. Well, my thoughts on weapon durability are as follows. I think it is a good idea to make weapons have a breaking point. I mean, it makes sense, obviously. Since you can seemingly take any number of weapons, ranging from a stick to a severed arm of a stall Bokoblin, it would make sense that these things would break. I mean, if they wouldn't, then why get rid of them? And if you don't want to get rid of them, why only have a limited number of spaces to store them? I think in the demos, you could only hold five weapons at a time. I would hate to see Link have to leave one weapon behind because you're not sure if you want to keep it, the one you have or take the new one. Having them break makes you feel like it doesn't matter if you lose this weapon because it's going to break anyway. Uh, you can even throw them when they're about to break and do more damage. Now, do I think weapons will be upgradable? Probably. Uh, I do believe that there was an interview talking about uh, that weapons could become upgradable, or repairable, at least. Maybe only some weapons can be upgraded. Like, it doesn't make sense to me that a stick could get upgraded, but a sword makes sense, or an axe. I could be wrong, though. I would hope that the Master Sword isn't going to be rusty and battle-worn the whole game, like it is in the trailer, and in the logo. I feel like that would be a quest to reforge it, or imbue it with the goddess's power, or do something. I mean, isn't the Master Sword supposed to be indestructible? If there was going to be a weapons upgrade system, I think that it would only be able to be done in certain areas, like towns, or perhaps a cabin. Like the woodcutter's cabin we see in the demo, but Instead of a woodcutter's cabin, it would be a smith's shop. Lisp is still there. But, like I said before, I could be dead wrong. This is just a theory. I'm just talking here. So, yes, I think there could be weapons that can be upgraded with certain materials. As for the Biggeron sword, well, there are giant enemies in the game. Why not a big familiar face like this one to give you a sword fit for a giant? Akuma Masurao, I'm terrible at these, seems to like my well-thought-out ideas and examples. It's just like when that guy does that thing with the other thing. You know what I mean. Oh, you take that back if I kept talking unedited. Believe me, we're going on six minutes and I'm sure I cut it down to bless by now. You don't want to hear me talk forever. Evec25 asks what my thoughts, or rather theories, of the storyline of Breath of the Wild. Well, from the trailers, I assume that the voice that tells you to wake up will have some type of impact on the game. Whether that voice is the embodiment of the Sheikah Slate, or perhaps it could be the voice of Princess Zelda, I don't know. Uh, just a couple theories on that. As for the actual story, there isn't much to go by. The old man is really the only character we've seen in the demos from E3. In an interview with IGN, IG Anuma did state that there would be villages, but he said talking about them would be spoilers. What I theorize by this is that it's like in Majora's Mask. There could be towns full of people that have stories that don't have a big outcome of the end game. Like in Majora's Mask, you can beat the game without talking to many people in Clockdown. But one of the greatest parts of Majora's Mask 
is learning about this pretty diverse group of characters and how their stories intertwine with each other. Zachary Erickson asks, among other things, don't they use different types of cell shading? In my last video, I talked about how there is a mixture between Wind Waker and Twilight Princess styles, and I said cell shading, but I should have said art style. Um, by this, I needed to look up the definition of cell shading. A lot of people, myself included, are not fully aware of what it is and how it's used in video games and other media. Honestly, the first time I ever heard about cell shading was back in 2003 when The Wind Waker came out. Also, in Smash Brothers Melee, the level Poke Floats, the Poke Floats themselves were cell shaded. But cell shading isn't an art style, as I thought it was when I was younger, but a way that 3D graphics are rendered to make them appear, in most cases, flat. Something I learned while making this video is that the television show Archer uses cell shading to animate the show. So, will there be cell shading in Breath of the Wild? Yes. Will it be like Wind Waker? Parts of it will. Look at the Koroks. And now, for probably the longest answer to a question I have, is from Megajet25 and Avec25. If you have 25 in your username, you want to know about the timeline theory. And here it is. So where does Breath of the Wild take place in the timeline? This is a really good question. Uh, this part of the video will include some spoilers, so if you want to keep Breath of the Wild a surprise, skip this portion of the video, but then again, you're here to listen to me talk, so I don't know why you'd want to do that. After the release of Hyrule Historia, Nintendo has not updated their timeline for the series. Although the only game in the main series to be added was A Link Between Worlds, which we can assume takes place right after A Link to the Past. With the timeline provided by Nintendo, we can be pretty certain that it takes place after Ocarina of Time, which is where Ganondorf is introduced, which you can only assume is how Calamity Ganon comes into existence. So, the question is, does it take place in the child timeline, the adult timeline, or the Defeated Hero timeline? Well, that's the question, isn't it? One clue could be the inclusion of the Koroks. The only other game they appear in is the Wind Waker. Does that mean it takes place after Wind Waker, or before? All the inclusion of the Koroks mean to me, at least, is that there has to be a Great Deku Tree, right? The Koroks could just be Koroks that have nothing to do with the Great Deku Tree, though. But I hope they include the Great Deku Tree. I want to see that guy again. If these are the same Koroks from Wind Waker, then I can only assume it would be after Wind Waker. But then, these games wouldn't happen. But, could this be that this is another split? Could this be after Wind Waker, where Ganon defeats Link? They did it before with Ocarina of Time. I don't know, but it's a possibility. Really, I need to play the game before I make any other big assumptions. The only other questions in the comments that I'd like to answer are about my bridge series. Well, I'm going to make another video just talking about that. This video was mainly to get all the other questions about Breath of the Wild out there. If there's any more information coming out about Breath of the Wild, I could always do another video. Everyone, I hope this video answered your questions, and I want you all to know that if you want to keep up with me, I will be posting more often on my Facebook page. If you want, I can dust off my Twitter. I have a Google Plus account that you can check out. I don't know why you would. And if you want to send me a personal email, you can do so at nevitshirts at gmail.com. I hope you all have a great night. And that's all I wrote.